Good morning to you. I may be known to you, but for those who don't know me, my name is Stephen Rochester, and for better or worse, I'm a businessman who happens to be a chartered accountant. The practice I work in is Rochester's, based in St Paul's Square, Birmingham, which I started at the tender age of 27. I'm now 53 and have had considerable experience in dealing with businessmen, banks and bank managers, lawyers, chartered surveyors and independent financial advisors, all with many different personalities and in many circumstances. I mainly deal with businesses in the turnover range of a million to 25 million pounds. The practice has 20 specialists and two partners. I've also had experience of running a trading business with my backside on the line. So believe me, I understand the pressures. During my 30 years plus in the profession, I've witnessed recurring themes, particularly regarding financial behavior. I'd like to develop these themes, which is why I've called them the seven sins of directors. There are certain fundamentals that directors should have in place, but generally don't when a business is going through either stages of growth or contraction. There's an unbelievable lack of understanding of business value and understanding what is value on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll endeavor to give an insight into these sins and what should be done to sort each one out. I'll take about 10 minutes to cover the first two sins. The remaining sins are covered in the next of our series of podcasts. First, I'd like to talk about the measurement of results. Many businesses fail to measure their results with monthly or quarterly figures. Think of this as keeping the score in a game of football or cricket, with each game representing a time period. Would you play a serious game of football or cricket without keeping the score? There are many cliches to sum this up, and even with my best endeavours in the past, I've still failed sometimes to get some people to understand the importance of measuring the results. Some of you may find it incredible that I'm putting this point forward as measurement comes naturally. But there are many business people who neglect their financials and put all their efforts into other areas. Measuring your results doesn't necessarily produce sales. But as the cliche goes, if you're not measuring it, you're not managing it. So, the first sin of many people in business is not measuring accurately on a regular basis where they are financially. Arguments can be put that a business can't afford to do this accounting in-house. But by using their external accountants, there are a variety of solutions to get meaningful monthly or quarterly financials. If you look at it from a personal angle, if you have a personal guarantee or a house charge for a bank overdraft of £100,000, it's worthwhile paying a sum to know where you are financially. It's a no-brainer. Recently, we had a double glazing business that had spectacular growth and who was paid with a deposit up front and the balance on completion. The bank account was always healthy and the owner insisted that he didn't need to have managed accounts during the year, given his cash position. No matter how hard I tried to explain that cash, although extremely important, didn't necessarily show the full picture of his business. He wouldn't budge. A bit like in football. Having a great striker is beneficial, but neglecting the quality of your goalkeeper will lead to conceding goals. At the end of the financial year, we produced accounts which showed that he had paid too much commission to his salesman for the work they'd obtained. In other words, his formula for commission was too generous. Unfortunately, the way the company was paid by their customers had masked this error. We pointed out that if he'd measured his results on a regular basis, this would have come to light a lot earlier, and a considerable amount of commission would have been saved. The sum of money saved would have far outweighed the cost of having management accounts prepared either internally or externally. Added to this, the individual's domestic residence was used as security for loans on equipment and machinery being purchased by the business. The business failed and having analysed the situation, the cost of his quarterly management accounts would have been approximately £8,000 per annum. Unfortunately, by not getting this right, he lost his home. What any businessman should consider when setting a business up is not only the quality of the sales team, the production team, the research team and the delivery team, but also what financial information will be produced to measure the performance of those various teams, what we call key performance indicators. Cost will be a constraint, but it should not prevent measurement in a recognised form. This is an area often neglected in the mistaken belief that the business can't afford the cost of reasonably accurate information. A typical reply from clients is that they have their own gut feel or rule of thumb system of measurement but accurate financial information is like the navigation system of a boat. 
It allows you to steer in the right direction. The second area that I should like to talk about is the subject of not seeing the big picture, where we're going with the business and what challenges lie ahead. I often find that with business people, they are good at certain areas such as sales or production, but they don't grasp that they need to sit down and talk not just about the short term, but they also need to consider medium and long term objectives of the business. This enables focus and should be revisited every so often to reassess the points of focus. This could simply be done on one piece of A4 paper, essentially a document that could be called, why are we here doing what we are doing? Again, using the analogy of a boat, this ensures that the business is trying to arrive at a port rather than simply wandering around the oceans of the world. I've been introduced to businesses to find owners who have left their jobs because of internal politics or because they've been made redundant or they've had a vision and a passion. They end up running their business for a number of years and it just becomes a job without the focus of where they want to be. In this situation, it's not a lifestyle business, it's a treadmill. The answer is to sit down with a fellow director, confidant or trusted advisor and put down on a piece of A4 paper where you want to be at some point in the future. A business must have focus. The aim then is to point the boat, or should I say the business, in the direction that will meet the goals that have been set down. Many, many people ignore this, and it's been proven by research at Harvard that those people who write down their ambitions, or strategy, call it what you wish, are more likely to get to where they want to be, rather than someone who has simply kept this in their head. This may be difficult to believe, but there are many businesses in this position, and when pointed out, some people listen, whilst others just carry on regardless. You must plan to get to the next port of call. You do not want to be a person who succeeds through a huge reliance on lady luck, although I recognise we all need some luck. Often it is said by liquidators, the funeral directors of the business community, the blame for any failure in a business lies with the management. The second reason for the failure is management, and the third reason is management. So, remember, one, measure the results regularly using recognised methods. Two, look at the big picture regularly to ensure you arrive at your chosen destination. It was said by the golfer Gary Player, the harder I worked, the luckier I got. Well, I'd like to modify that for business and say, the more I thought about my business, the luckier I got. This series on the sins of directors will continue into aspects some of you may not have thought of. If you'd like to know more or would like to receive a free CD copy of further podcasts, why not email me on srochester at rochesters.co.uk. That's srochester at rochesters.co.uk.